we are going to do a remote debugging in VS Code. We have uh, we can take two machines. One is the Windows machine that is uh, uh, which will have an IP address of 192.168.100.21, and another is Linux machine which has an IP address of 192.168.100.80. Next, we will uh, go to Visual Studio Code, uh, VS Code, uh, which uh, will be installed on uh, Windows machine. And we need to connect to Linux machine, which is which will be our remote server for debugging. Now, first we check, we can connect with the uh, remote server through SSH port. Uh, we type SSH root at the rate 192.168.100.80 from the command prompt of Windows server. So, uh, if it's get connected that is okay but if it's not connecting that means port is not open in firewall so we need to talk to network administrator uh, to open the ssh port in firewall so that we can access the remote server uh, which will be the linux server we will also check with the network administrator if the port we are using for debugging let's say 9000 or 9003 or 9000 uh, 9090 are also open in firewall we then open VS Code and install a remote SSH plugin. Uh, we will press F1 and search for remote SSH plugin and click on it on the extension window. It will get installed. We will then uh, open command prompt in Windows machine server and type SSH key gen and it will generate a key pair for you. Public uh, key will be um, named as RD, ID underscore RSA dot pub and private key will be ID underscore RSA. We will keep the private key in our computer and move the public key to the remote server. Uh, where we will place, we will place, uh, let's say if it's a Linux server, we will place it in uh, root because we are uh, logging with a root user. So we will place in root.ssh uh, slash uh, authorized underscore keys underscore keys file. So when we connect with the key pair, uh, you need to click on the config ssh host and enter the following detail it will be the host will be the ip address of the remote server host name uh, will be uh, will also be the ip address if uh, if the machine has a host name then we can enter the host name the user will be root because we are uh, logging with the root and the identity file will be the private key of the windows machine so now we will check in the remote server whether X, uh, there will be xdebug.ini uh, uh, if xdebug.ini is not available then we can use also php.ini in the remote server so it is assumed it is already assumed that uh, uh, the remote server has uh, xdebug installed on the machine uh, and we will uh, put the following configuration uh, in the um, xdebug.ini or php.ini so that will be the gen extension will equal to uh, which will point to the xdebug.so uh, module and uh, uh, the remote login for the remote log uh, we can place it at in slash temp slash xdebug.log uh, for the remote enable we need to uh, make it on then remote host will be localhost uh, because uh, for the xdebug uh, that remote server will act as a localhost for the xdebug um, uh, module and uh, a remote port will uh, will be 9000 so a remote auto start will be one remote handler will be dbgp so now we will create a folder uh, in the remote server that will be debug folder and we just add a file that will be test.php and just uh, in the file content it will be uh, just eco php info uh, uh, function which will uh, uh, gives all the details of the uh, PHP file or PHP configuration. Uh, now we will do some practical uh, to understand how it actually happens. So we will do a SSH uh, to that remote server and uh, which is uh, root at the rate 192.168.100.80 and if uh, we can see that it gets connected so the port is all open then we will do a ssh keygen uh, uh, type ssh keygen and we will generate a key pair uh, for the um, uh, public key and the private key to access the ssh uh, uh, remote server uh, through the key pair 
so you can see uh, the two key files uh, generated one is a private key and another is the public key pub file uh, type is pub file so uh, we will uh, copy this pub file uh, and we will move it to the remote server and uh, the private key will be uh, stored in the same computer and so uh, we will move uh, that to the um, uh, we will copy this uh, uh, which is the public key and we will move this uh, to the remote server we will like move on to that uh, authorized key file which is under root dot uh, slash dot ssh and authorized key so we will place that public key which uh, we have generated we will uh, copy paste that public key which we have generated in our local uh, windows server uh, we will copy that and we will paste uh, in this file uh, that is a uh, root uh, that is under root because we are uh, logging through the root user so under root dot ssh folder you will get uh, authorized key and then we will place now we will open vs code and uh, we will uh, put in uh, we will press f1 and uh, uh, we will uh, check whether uh, that is ssh uh, root at the rate 192 is accessible from the VS code uh, or not and we will press enter and uh, 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 we will check uh, we will uh, we will first check that uh, whether uh, remote SSH uh, uh, plugin is installed then we will add a new SSH host uh, for that uh, we will uh, add a new ssh uh, host uh, we will configure ssh host for that uh, we will uh, do we will add a new ssh host So this is uh, how we are going to add SSH uh, host to the uh, VS code uh, SSH access to the host from the VS code. We will add the configuration uh, which we have uh, discussed earlier uh, like uh, it's a host then host name and then the user and then the identity file uh, uh, so that uh, uh, let me uh, go back to that uh, file uh, so identity file we will uh, put the identity file as um, the we will mention the path as dot ssh and then uh, id underscore rsa which is the private key we have already discussed before so that will be the private key we will uh, create the configuration file for accessing uh, with the key pair to the remote server now we will try to connect uh, we will uh, try to connect that remote server and you can see uh, with that continue and it get connected without using any password through the key pair and then we will try to access the folder on that remote server uh, which we have created that is the debug folder under where www html that's a debug folder now in the debug folder we will create a test file yes we will create the debug folder so it will ask for you trust the author yes we trust the author of that file of that folder now we will create a file 
under the debug folder which is called test.php PHP info this is a function and closing the PHP tab okay so now before running before going to run this uh, we need start debugging if we do start debugging it will not happen because there is no configuration file so we need to create the configuration file for debugging so again we move to run and we will do the add configuration in this add configuration we will change the port as 9000 change the port as 9000 then we will add the URL URL as HTTP HTTP under double quote HTTP colon double slash 192.168.100.80 slash debug slash now we will do a comma and then we will add the web root web root as workspace folder workspace workspace folder folder We will now move to the browser, start debugging. So now the debugging and we move to the browser. Open the browser and then check by typing oh it's not stopping at the breakpoint so we again move that what happened because we haven't put in any breakpoints in any file so now we will create the breakpoint and we will try again and yes you can see yes you can see yes the breakpoint has stopped in this point so you can see the debugging started working so we have done